hello girls for today's class we're going to discuss uh, hopkins poem another poem of by hopkins habit of perfection in the previous class we discussed spring and fall i hope you have understood the poem so this particular poem habit of perfection was written in 1866 when hopkins was still studying at oxford the poem was originally called the king the kind betrothal the poet in this poem states his resolution to take to a religious and austere life and to discard all the pleasures of the senses instead of the sweet strains of music to gratify his sense of hearing silence will sing a still music to him in other words he will content himself with silence and not seek the pleasurable notes of music nor will he indulge in the eloquence or rhetoric of speech his eloquence will reside in his remaining dumb and not allowing his lips to utter any words what he really means to say here uh, is that he will write no more poetry so as to devote himself fully to aestheticism likewise he will deny himself the pleasure of the sense of sight taste smell and touch he urges his eyes to shut themselves to confusing pictures which worldly activities offer to the beholder and to perceive god's creative energy by looking inward so uh, you know if you're going to look at the poem you can see there are seven quatrains of the poem and uh, which move through the five senses to describe the relationship between the human body renunciation and the activity of pursuing holiness according to the poem what work does each of the senses do in helping an individual towards holiness this is what your poet is trying to talk about although it is true that most christians uh, you know practice particular habits also known as spiritual disciplines with a view towards holiness the poem particularly considers the aestheticism of uh, the religious orders the title as you can see therefore habit of perfection uh, you know can be interpreted or can be you know uh, has a double meaning habit refers to both repetition so because you have to repeat uh, you know particular thing to get perfection and also it refers to uh, the unique clothing of the religious order in what ways does the poem suggest the religious order train their senses towards holiness particularly consider the exhortations and commands in each of the stanza in the context of holiness or perfection what might be the significance of seven stanzas be we'll see to it so in addition to the five senses uh, hopkins adds poverty to the final stanza and how he relates uh, this poverty to the five senses poverty as an additional or rather a descriptive kind of a thing that we're going to see uh, so let us begin with the poem and your uh, first stanza says elected silence sing to me and beat upon my whole ear fight me to pasture still and be the music that i care to hear so uh, the poet uh, rejects the pleasure of listening to music and chooses silence instead and what he has done he has done personification he has personified silence and call upon it to sing to him only silent melodies and tunes as he is not interested is listening to any of the shepherds playing upon their pipes and producing musical tunes in the pasture pastures are the fields that are there where their sheep graze in actual fact hopkins here is rejecting the pleasure of poetry so um as i told you there was uh, when i you know gave you the introduction to uh, hopkins i told you that there was this time for 7 years he didn't write anything he wrote no poetry and then he wrote the rack of deutschland uh which uh, he wrote because uh, there was a shipwreck in which few nuns uh, you know uh, were killed uh, or died so uh, there was this time when he decided that he is not going to write any poetry and that is why he want that elected silence elected silence is here for choosing silence the silence that he has uh, chosen for himself he wanted to sing for him so the meaning of the elected silence is chosen silence which the poet elects or chooses in preference to speech so for him he says my uh, the silence is going to be more important to me than any music that anybody is producing in this world so he doesn't want to listen to any music the only music that he cares to hear is the silence itself become a kind of music so uh, this is your first stanza 
now he is coming on to another sense the sense of uh, you know the speaking uh, so shape nothing lives be lovely dumb it is the shut the curfew sense from there where all surrenders come which only makes you eloquent so now what is he saying so in the second stanza the poet rejects the pleasure of speaking and indulging in rhetorical or eloquent speeches he calls upon his lips to remain shut so be lovely dumb uh, means that he wants his lips to not to make any any you know any shape so when we speak we make uh, shapes with our lips so he says uh, because uh, he, because in the first answer he said that i wanted to elect silence so spirituality is nourished in silence so if he want spirituality if he want holiness so what he should do he should um, you know not speak he should keep his lips be lovely dumb uh, by surrendering their power of speech his lips will attain true eloquence uh, what is going to happen uh, they are going to be more eloquent they are going to be more frequent so indirectly hopkins here expresses his resolve not to write any poetry writing poetry would be contrary to his chosen path of religion and ecstasism uh, ecstasism so what is he trying to say so he says the poet must surrender his faculty of speech in order to live the life of recluse so from where uh, there where all surrenders come so you are surrendering you are surrendering yourself surrendering how you are surrendering yourself because he says i don't want to speak anything i don't want to listen to any music so you are you know giving up on your senses the pleasures the pleasures that a human uh, being has so he's you know uh, surrendering all those feelings and then he says uh, another uh, sense he is talking about the sense of seeing the sense of eyes be shelled eyes with double dark and find the uncreated light this rock and reel which you remark coils keeps and teases simple sight so in this stanza the poet rejects the pleasure of seeing beautiful sights and urging his eyes to remain tightly closed against any external sight or any and why he want to do that because he want to perceive the creative energy of god's mind so all the variated sight of the world and the entire world of material interest simply ensnare and bewilder the beholder side which should therefore refuse to witness such things so he be shelled be shut eyes with double dark so what is double dark so when you going to so there is no light outside there is no light so when when you have no electricity and you close your eyes so you have that double dark because at the moment i mean if you open your eyes then also you will not be able to see anything because there is no light outside so similarly by double dark so by double dark is that uh, internally he doesn't want to indulge in any kind of pleasure and secondly is because he has closed his eyes so he would not be able to see and find the uncreated light and what is this uncreated light this uncreated light is the uh, you know the energy the creative energy of god's mind and find the uncreated light this rock rock is the variated spectacle and real is the confusion of the materialistic things that are there which you remark remark is which you see or observe coils is confuses keeps is go on and tees simple sight so it is therefore better to keep one side shut against all worldly things so he says i'm not interested in looking anything externally all i want is the energy is the creative light is the energy is the inspiration that is coming from god so he says i apart from that i am not interested in looking at any of these things and then he says palate now he is coming on to the sense of taste uh, palate the hut of tasty lust desire not to be rinsed with wine the can must be so sweet the crust so fresh that comes in fast divine so what is now what is now he saying here so he doesn't want uh, to you know to desire to have a taste of delicious food and to crave for wine to wash down those food so he says i don't want palate is for tongue the heart heart here refers to the place where something is kept so what is tongue the tongue is a place of tasty lust so what is happening uh, so the poet rejects to gratify his sense of taste of his gluttonous desire gluttonous is eating too much you know 
when you are you become greedy for a particular thing so gluttonous desire for delicious foods and wine he would like to observe fast which please god and to satisfy his hung hunger only with dry bread and plain water so what is he trying to say say here palate the hatch of tasty lust desire not to be rinsed with wine so if you going to uh, see here why here refer has a pun in it it has two meanings first meaning is to wash out the mouth and to wash down food with wine so generally whenever we are eating we uh, have something to drink so uh, it can be water or it can be wine so he says or uh, you know uh, we gargle it so he says what i want i don't want my uh, lips or i don't want my tongue to have any kind of such delicious food the can can is the vessel must be so sweet the crust crust is the dry bread so and when he is going to enjoy it so fresh that comes in fast fast divine so he says he is referring to that whenever we are keeping fast so what do we do we don't eat uh, on a regular basis or we don't eat anything uh, you know which is uh, which is very spicy or something so uh, in generally whenever whenever we are keeping fast our food is very simple so similarly he says that the the food that i wanted to eat which is going to be more enjoyable what is going to be more enjoyable than the foods and the wines of multiple thing he says the uh, the dry bread and plain water is going to be much better far better than all the foods that has been created in the world so that is why he says that i don't want anything very fancy or very gluttonous very spicy or anything uh, you know which you know uh, is going to uh, uh, you, uh, is going to send me off uh, from my routine so I, he says i want simple food that person eats when that person is keeping fast so that is why the palate uh, the heart of tasty lust desire not to be rinsed with wine the can must be so sweet the crust so fresh that comes in fast divine and now coming on to the sense of uh, smell nostrils your careless breath that spend upon the and uh, upon the stir and keep of pride what relish shall, shall the censer send along the century side so in this stanza the poet is addressing his organs of smell says that they should take pleasure in the sweetness of the incense that is burnt at church when holy ceremonies are performed and that they should not crave the exquisite scents and perfumes which la proud ladies wear so nostrils that is the sense of smell your careless breath that spend upon the stir and keep of pride what relish relish is that appetizing flavors that are there shall the senses senses uh, is the vessel in which the incense is burnt for religious ceremony for uh, you know for uh, like we do we have havan kund so similarly that is called a censers along the century side century side is the church or the temple or a holy place the way which leads you towards these holy places so the poet call himself uh, to be in content in content with the smell of incense in the church and not to seek the exquisite smell and perfumes that proud ladies wear to make themselves more desirable so he says i don't want uh, uh, to you know smell these uh, beautiful and you know uh, perfumes the scents exquisite scents that these ladies are uh, ladies wear to make them more desirable i don't want anything what i want is i want uh, the the smell of the censers that are coming from a holy place and o feel of primrose hands o feet that want the yield of plushy sword but you shall walk the golden street and you unhouse uh, and house the lord so in this stanza the poet is addressing his hands and feet which normally seek the touch of soft things says that he would not seek the pleasure of walking upon thick and velvety grass but would walk to the church and there partake of the consecrated bread which is the symbolic of the body of christ so now what is happening here so o feel of primrose hands o feet so hands which seek the softness that want the yield yield is the grass uh, in which is thick and soft of plushy sword plushy sword is the stretch of land where thick velvety grass grows but you shall walk the golden street and what is that golden street the street that leads to church and you unhouse the house so it's a sacred uh, ceremony that happens there a sacred bread where lord supper specially the bread was being there 
so the performance uh, he is talking about the sacred performance that is being performed at church so he says i don't want to touch anything which is soft i don't want to uh, indulge myself in an, any other materialistic aspect which fancies me he says rather i would do what i would walk the golden street and why it is a golden street because it is taking you to divinity because it is it is pure because it is going to make your connection with god so you're going to be connected with god so that is why he says that i don't want that thing and you unhouse the house of the lord so unhouse the house of the lord is the ceremony um uh, a ceremony that has been the a sacred rite which is performed at the church so he says this is what i wanted to indulge myself into and the last stanza as i have told you that after talking about the senses he is coming on to poverty which he has also included as one of the senses and he says and poverty be thou the bride and now the marriage feast begun and lily colored clothes provide your spouse not labored at nor fun so what is he talking about here so this is the last stanza as i have told you of the poem wherein the poet's bride would be a pretty would not be a pretty uh, maiden but poverty with poverty as his bride the poet would not have to look for ostentatious and showy robes robes are the cloth uh, uh, the clothes that uh, the bride uh, generally wears but would be content with simple clothes which like lilies of the field in nolls no labor or toil so he says i don't want any kind of elaborated wedding but a simple lily colored clothes would be there and there is an echo of christ word thus the poet rejects all display or ostentatious things so far clothing is concerned just as he has rejected all other items of sensual pleasure so he wants poverty to be his bride so he is going to lead the life of poverty and uh, he doesn't want his bride to be a pretty maiden so uh, any lady who is pretty or any lady who wears the perfume or any lady who sings or speaks he says i don't want anything of that he want his bride to be poverty why because the moment you are living your life in poverty you would be away from all the materialistic aspects of this world and if you're going to lead your life like that away from all the materialistic aspects away from all the sensual pleasures then you would be much nearer to god so this is what he is trying to talk about in this poem rejecting everything that is there um uh, so i hope you have understood it uh, go through the poem uh, you know habit of perfection is i say is you know is the simplicity of more apparent than real a deception that is made possible uh, by him uh you know possible by the theme which is curiously plain and by the structure which is seemingly inorganic however if you're going to talk about the structure of the poem it consists of more than a series of resentment of the theme and the paradox of denial and fulfillment involved of the poem and the key of its fullest meaning lies in understanding the use which your poet has made of uh, you know allusions to holy scriptures and priestly life the religious vows and perhaps less obviously to the scarement of extreme inaction so biblical allusions have been used and uh, the uses of pa- pasture the golden street are lesser examples of the biblical allusions which are used uh, you know so i hope you have understood the poem uh, if but in case if there is any problem that i can help you with feel free to post that on your google classroom so thank you for today have a nice time stay safe and study hard thank you